On the day before Easter Sunday in 1980, Sister Margaret Ann Paul, a 71-year-old Catholic nun, was found brutally murdered on the floor of the chapel at the Toledo Mercy Hospital. Paul, who was the chapel's caretaker, had 31 oddly shaped stab wounds on her face, neck, and chest. Nine of the stab wounds over her heart appeared to form an inverted cross. It's believed that the inverted crosses were made to mock her death and never allow her spirit to see peace. The weapon itself wasn't found at the scene, but it appeared to have been a small saber. The nun's arms were crossed, and she was wrapped up in altar cloth. The once holy house of God had become a shrine of mockery and sacrilege. The murderer had taken the initiative to even perform an unholy last rite ceremony on the poor deceased woman. This was proven when she was discovered to have her own blood smeared with the shape of a cross on her forehead. Only God can know what was said to her as the demonic ritual was performed. An early suspect in the blasphemous murder was Father Gerald Robinson, the chapel's priest. Two weeks after the murder, Robinson, who presided over Paul's funeral, was brought to the police station for questioning, but as he was being interviewed, an odd thing happened. One of the diocese's monasteurs walked in, stopped the interview, and walked Robinson right out of the building. Many speculate the church was protecting the satanic priest for reasons that remain unknown. However, 23 years later, some light may have been shed on the subject. With no other suspects, the murder of Sister Paula remained cold for 23 long years. The case was given new life in 2003 when the police received a letter from a woman who was only identified as Survivor Doe. In her letter, Doe said she had been sexually abused by a priest and people dressed like nuns in satanic rituals. Survivor Doe even said that some of these rituals involved human sacrifices. She also identified the priest involved with the satanic rituals as Father Gerald Robinson. With these allegations brought to life, many worshippers began to wonder how far spread this demonic clergy reached, and if their own priests performed in these rituals and human sacrifices. Had that been why the church went out of their way to free Father Robinson? Had they wished the dark activities to remain a closely guarded secret of the church? After the letter turned up, police began to look into Father Robinson, and they were able to search his office. There they found a letter opener shaped like a small saber. The police had Paul's corpse exhumed, and it was determined that the letter opener was indeed the murder weapon. That evidence, coupled with the three witnesses putting Robinson in the area at the time of the murder, led to him being arrested for first-degree murder. At his trial, prosecutors argued that Robinson stabbed Paul to death because he thought she was overbearing. The breaking point came when she criticized the Good Friday surface he had presided over the day before the murder. Robinson was convicted in May 2006, making his actions the only known recorded case of a Catholic priest killing a nun. He died in prison at the age of 76 in July of 2014. Strangely enough, however, after his death, the church gave him a funeral befitting any holy man. They never did exhume him from their religion. Instead, they remained quiet, letting him continue life as a practitioner of theology. It's unknown who Father Robinson was with when Survivor Dill was kidnapped and forced to watch and participate in all manner of sin. It's also unknown why the church gave him a priest's funeral after his satanic alignment. Perhaps what we believe about the church has changed, been corrupted by the very people we confide in. Surely not every priest is malicious and blasphemous, but how would we know which ones are sinners behind closed doors? Hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot to me. As always, until next time.